Facebook. And over the last hour, he has stressed multiple times that the main place that people spread COVID is no longer out in public. Now, one of the major drivers of transmission is not the public square. It's actually the home gatherings where people let down their guard. Um, you know, you bring in family members and they don't realize that the major presentation of this virus for individuals, say, under the age of 40, is it's totally asymptomatic. So back in May, April, that kind of time frame, I was having some rather weird medical problems. My blood sugar had just gone off the deep end. May have talked a little bit about it back then. But as I couldn't work anymore with the gyms being closed and everything else, my blood sugars went from in range, nominally, to at one point they were averaging around 400. And it was kind of stressing me out at the time. It was weird. And when it got weirder is when I went for my diabetic eye exam and she looked at my eyes and she was infused because it wasn't as bad as it should have been. You know what I'm saying? She's talking about this slurry of sugar that's flowing through my veins with these kind of numbers and, and how much damage it's doing to my eyes and that kind of stuff. And she only found one little problem with my eye. <laughs> it was confusing to her and it was confusing to me. They did an A1C test in August and it was... I was expecting it to be based on the numbers that I keep track of. I was expecting it up to be around between 11 and 12, and it came back at 8.1, which is just, just it's out of range, but not by, not by the degree that it should have been. It's confusing everybody. Um, great panic ensued. I was sent to see an endocrinologist and all kinds of stuff, and at, at the end of the day, turned out that the strips that I was using were contaminated and my measurements were were out of range but not by much but all this led to yesterday where I had to put on my mask go out in public yesterday didn't really want to but I had to go to the labs to get another A1C test so that we could see that everything is now working the way it's supposed to and this is kind of uh well, it's the way of things now isn't it so out i headed not realizing that the labs didn't open until 8 a.m i thought they opened at 7 a.m so i went at 7 30 to let the initial rush get through and then do my thing and then get on my way get there about 7 45 it's not far away and they start by giving me a bunch of crap about, well, you know, the labs don't open till 8 o'clock. Oh, I, I didn't know that. But as it turns out, we needed you to come early anyway because we got some paperwork for you to fill out. This is where the problem begins. Look, I have said this from day one about COVID. If COVID is what we are being told that it is, we're doing everything wrong which tells me that either it's not what we're told it is, or I don't know. I don't know what the alternative to that is. Here in the state of Washington, we have mask mandates. We're told, wear your mask everywhere you go. Why? Because you care about the health and well-being of everybody else. So if you don't wear your mask, it's not that you're not afraid. It's that you hate everybody else. We already have the mask mandates that the incoming president is talking about making mandatory. We already have our gyms and businesses shut down because well, I don't know why they're shut down. Again, we're doing everything wrong. We have an indoor dining ban here. I understand California now has this, and California has now extended that to outdoor dining, but here in Washington, we haven't gone that far yet. We can still have outdoor dining because apparently the virus is stupid and doesn't understand the difference between people indoors and the people outdoors. So the restaurants, of course, are having fits because how are they supposed to make any money? Takeout's great. Everybody loves takeout. I love takeout. 
but you know, there's a certain level of, I don't want to eat at home. I, I, want, I want the atmosphere of eating at a restaurant, of having someone wait on me. I, I want that experience, and that's what dining out is all about. We can't dine indoors. So we, all these restaurants here in December in Washington are setting up outdoor dining facilities, which is a weird way of saying that we're building outdoor indoor dining facilities. This is one of my favorite restaurants here in town. This is its outdoor dining facility, which is now completely enclosed and heated and is basically indoors. We can't eat outdoors, but we can eat indoors outdoors. Or we can't eat indoors, but we can eat outdoors indoors. You see what I'm saying? This whole thing is just... Ay, ay, ay. So I go to the doctor yesterday, go to the lab, and they, well, they want me to come up and fill out some paperwork. So I get to the desk. This woman picks up the paperwork. And she slides it across the thing to me and hands it to me and says, you know, underneath the, <laughs> underneath the plexiglass... God knows, I don't want to breathe on her. He hands me the paperwork through the hole, and I set it down on the table, and I start to pick up the pen. She says to me, an exact quote, Do not use that pen. Why not? Well, as it turns out, there are a couple of cups to the left of where I wasn't looking with pens in them, one labeled clean, one labeled dirty. And I must use a clean pen, and when I am done with the clean pen, then I can put it back in the dirty box. So follow me here. First, she hands the paperwork to me. Got that visual in your head? Then she yells at me, use the clean pen. Don't use that pen is what she actually said. Then I sign the paperwork. And I hand it back to her through the hole in the plexiglass. Just let it marinate for a second. And then she says, put the pen in the dirty cup. You see what I'm talking about here? We can have indoor outdoor seating, and we got to go through this whole rigmarole about a stupid pen. Well, now it's dirty, now it's clean. Do they literally have someone on staff whose entire job it is to clean pens now? Well, the, the office supply companies must be loving this because maybe they're throwing the old pens away. They've had, they've had a use. My Subaru dealership, which I've had to go to a couple of times for some maintenance, actually says, take a pen and keep it. <laughs> At least their pens have advertising on it. It's a Super Peninsula Subaru dealership. Sure, they want you to have the pen. Take it. We don't care. Just don't put it back. because. If you put it back, then someone else might touch that pen, you know, just like you've just touched the paperwork that we just handed you to sign. This whole thing makes no sense. We're doing everything wrong if the virus is what we're told it is. If it is really the most dangerous, most infectious, most deadly virus in the entire history of, human, of life on the planet Earth, what the hell are we doing? Saw a picture yesterday that made me think about this. One of those things where we were talking about online schooling and they put out this cute little picture of this, whatever the heck that is, typing in his computer with his headphones on and he's listening to his teacher. It's looks like Ben, right? Until you look closer at it and you realize the headphones aren't on his ears, which are on top of his heads. But by God, he's doing it. He's doing what he's supposed to do. And you think to yourself, how much dumber can we get? What, what makes a business essential? I went and walked in the mall yesterday here. Do you know that every store in the mall including Spencer's Gifts, is open? In what universe is Spencer's Gifts an essential business? Spencer's Gifts is open. In the mall, Ted's Cleaning Service is closed. My gym is closed. And yet, literally, they will run a news story this morning about how 
Those places aren't dangerous anyway. The most dangerous place in Washington is, as the governor said, on our couches, on our chairs, at our tables. It's here at home. So their solution is, well, stay home. We're doing it just... <sighs> it's like wearing headphones not on your ears. It makes me wonder. And it makes me confused and it makes me angry and is it any wonder why people are getting angry about this because again everything we're told makes no freaking sense they're running ads up here about oh do you know how they make vaccines it's a 30 second commercial they're going to try to describe to you in 30 seconds how vaccines are made so that you'll be calm and collected when the vaccine comes out. Well, normally they test the vaccine and then they produce the vaccine, but because of the situation, we're doing both at the same time. <laughs> Hello? To anybody that's thinking, that's like, well, what if it doesn't work? And now you've produced massive quantities of a vaccine that doesn't work. Um, in what world does that make sense? Is anything going to change because of the vaccine? We're told over and over again, nothing's going to change. You're still going to have to wear your mask. You're still going to have to isolate. You're still going to have to do all those things. So what the hell good is the vaccine? They don't even know if it works. Reading Rod sent me an article the other day about the way they're doing the testing of the vaccine. <laughs> okay, 95% effective. Have you scratched your chin and went, what exactly does that mean? 95% effective at... What exactly does it do? I was very frustrated yesterday because I can't even go to the doctor's office to get my labs drawn so that they can measure my A1C to see that we're back on track without having to go through a bunch of just idiotic pro COVID protocols that make no sense. Then I can go down to my favorite restaurant where I can't eat indoors, but I can eat, you know, indoors <laughs> where, where I, I can walk to the mall where literally every store is open in the mall every single one of them but if i drive down the street or if i try to go to my gym those places are closed it's almost as if there's just no sense in this and i get an email this morning from steve steve's email was was nice Pleasant. I enjoy reading. I I do see. This is the dirty little secret. I, now that I'm no longer on radio, I do read your emails. I don't often respond to them, as I've talked about on numerous occasions. I just don't respond to people. Not that I don't like it. It's not that I don't appreciate it. It has to do with time. I've had my say. You've had your say. Okay, we both had our say. Let's move on. Um. But Steve sent me a nice email this morning where he was talking about it just confuses me and it makes me wonder if this whole thing is not just a distraction. What are we not paying attention to while we're busy obeying COVID protocols that make no sense and make no apparent impact in the virus efficacy anyway? You know, look... Some of you have complained about my take on the election and the fact that I'm not out here beating the drum for the for the election manipulation and cheating and all that. Does that mean that I don't think there was cheating? No, it doesn't mean that at all. What I mean is the real politic of the situation is you can't prove it. Neither can I. And no amount of, look, Dave, it's on Facebook or this doctor so-and-so signed an affidavit or this this math question that I can't do myself but somebody else did proves it. None of that proves anything. You can't prove it. And it's just like, oh, for the love of God, can't believe we have to do this again. It's just like the birth certificate nonsense. We spent four years wasting our lives chasing a piece of paper that <laughs> already existed. And because we didn't want to accept it, we chased that. And instead of getting involved and focusing on actual substantive issues where we could have challenged the Obama, where we could have won a couple more congressional seats and prevented certain legislation from happening, where we could have actually made some, some actual substantive impact on things, you know, like we did with Bill Clinton, where he had to triangulate back to the middle 
Could have done that, but no, we were so freaking obsessed. Like a pair of Tiberian bats, we clung to that birth certificate that we missed. I just got that joke. I've been watching that movie for, what, 30 years? I finally just got that joke just, just now. Wow. Sorry. Distraction. Shiny stuff. We, we clung to that like that and so focused on that that we forgot about everything else. I get it. We're not happy with the election result. I get it. We think there was cheating. I get it. We believe that there was cheating and malfeasance and all of that, and we're going to spend the rest of our lives thinking that. You can't prove it. And the real politic of the situation is you're not going to change it. You're not going to. So we can spend the next four years, next eight years, whatever it is, dealing with that. Or we can start focusing on winning, making sure that the Senate is controlled by the GOP, which is more important right now. Which is more important? Which is a more realistic goal? Which can actually be done and which is like a COVID restriction is just flapping in the wind and not accomplishing anything, not changing anything. Like these COVID restrictions that are pointless because the most dangerous place is in your home. Well, then why do we have all these stupid restrictions? You can spend your days worrying about all that. You can be distracted by, by the COVID. You can be distracted by the election and forget about the realities of what's going on, or <laughs> we can start focusing on what we need to be focused on and worrying about that. Maybe getting our businesses reopened, maybe changing some laws in some states so that governors don't have the authority to do these kinds of stupid things, or maybe focusing on people and teaching ourselves that there are, <laughs> there are limits to the power of government but only if we are willing to force them. Otherwise, we're going to spend the rest of our lives being told, don't use that pen.